One of the big challenges with self-custody is I often see people come up with all sorts of different schemes that they think will help provide an extra layer of security to their backups, but oftentimes actually don't. One of the schemes like this that I see pop up from time to time is when people have swapped pairs of words in their seed phrase, something that adds almost no security against someone who's actually trying to compromise your wallet, but also is a big inconvenience if you forget the words you switched. So in this video, I'll just be running through how to use BTC Recover to recover in a situation like this where you might have swapped a few pairs of words in a seed phrase. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So first things first, this video assumes you have a working installation of BTC Recover running. So if you haven't got that, you can follow the documentation online here, as well as video tutorials for a variety of different operating systems. The last thing I will say is there are malicious versions of BTC Recover in the wild. They are on GitHub. I've asked them to be removed. They are still there. So you need to make sure you're downloading the version from uh, my repository and make sure that you're running BTC Recover in a totally offline environment. Ideally, the system you run the recovery on would stay offline until you have moved the funds off the wallet onto a new one. In terms of the example in this video, I'll actually just be following a usage example that I wrote for this type of recovery and a few different situations that we've got here. So basically, we'll just start with this very standard recovery example. Now, these usage examples in the documentation are basically made, so you can literally just copy and paste them and they will just work straight away. So I'll just copy this command and then I'll actually just put it in command prompt and explain what it's doing. So basically we'll just open a command prompt in whatever system we're on, navigate to our BTC recover, and I'll just paste that command in there. So this command has a bunch of stuff in there, so it'll just run straight away without asking for any information. But the key things we want here are this argument here. So that's transform word swaps. That's the argument used. And what we're checking for in this instance is two pairs of words that have been swapped. And in this example, we actually just set typos to zero because we're sure that there are no other errors in this mnemonic. So if I just hit enter, and there we go, and that ran and found the correct seed very quickly. If you're doing your own recovery for this, uh, basically what we can do is we can get rid of most of this command line stuff and it will prompt us for it in the graphical interface. So if you were doing your own recovery and we're happy to enter everything in uh, on the graphical interface, you could just say, you know, python seed recover.py, you can set typos to zero. Uh, assuming there are no other errors in the seed and just choose the number of word swaps that you want. And basically then it will just prompt you for all the other information as well as give you the security warning. So we would just say cancel. And just to recreate what we just did before, we would choose that we have a Bitcoin wallet. We don't have the extended public key in this instance, so we'd say cancel. The wallet address in the previous example that we used was this one here, so we just paste that there. So the address generation limit is how far into your wallet it will search in terms of Bitcoin, which generally generates a new address for every transaction that you have. So depending on how new or old your wallet is, you might need to increase that to a larger number, you know, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 50. You wanna find one of the earliest addresses you can for this. If you're using an address database, instead of providing the actual address, you can just leave that at one because most wallets will start at the first address in the wallet. But look, we'll just leave that as 10. The default's pretty sensible. And here's where we put our best guess for the mnemonic. So in this instance, we're providing this guess here, which has these three words that are actually incorrect. So originally we started with this seed here and swapped uh, bulk and enrich. And then after we had made that swap, we also did a second swap where we swapped uh, the word in this position and this position. So we need to check for two swaps in this one. So we'll put that in as our guess. We'll say, okay. And then that's just gonna run. And there we go. And because we started it with the graphical interface, it pops up with the result in a graphical text box too. This functionality also works with seed lists and token lists and other things like that. And I'll just show you what that looks like in this next example here. So basically here we are using a seed list. So this might be a situation where someone has maybe four seeds and they've gone swapping the words around in them, but they're actually not sure which seed backup corresponds to the wallet they're trying to recover. The example seed list we are using are these four seeds here. And look, we'll just copy this command again. And because we're using a seed list, this actually is all gonna happen through the command line. So pretty much we specify the seed list here. Uh, this example just uses a seed list that's bundled with the repository. This here disables the um, security warning. I'm just checking the address limit of one, just for the sake of this example. 
got the address there. This could also just be an address database. Again, we're just using wallet type BIP39. And this time we're actually gonna check for three possible word swaps in all of these. Because we're using a seed list, we have to specify the mnemonic length and the language just like with a token list. So I'll just hit enter and that's gonna run. And there you go, there is the correct seed. And you can see in this instance, basically it was just two pairs of words that had been swapped. So we actually could have easily gotten away with only worrying about checking up to two pairs of words that were swapped. And even three swaps doesn't take a meaningful amount of time to solve anyway. In terms of the practical limits about how many swaps you can compute, the first thing to say is that a 12 word seed can be descrambled in a very short amount of time anyway. So for a 12 word seed, there is no number of swaps that makes a backup uh, secure. I demonstrate how to descramble a 12 word seed here. Even middle of the range hardware can descramble a 12 word seed in a couple of hours. So it really provides no real security. Though in terms of a 24 word seed, obviously the math involved means that just descrambling one of those that's completely random is not practical. And I essentially give you a quick formula here just to give you an idea of working out uh, how many possibilities there are for an n number of swaps. And essentially, you know, you've got one, two, and three swaps here that you can look at, which are all quite doable, uh, though you will start to hit a wall of exponential complexity once you go past more than, say, three or four swaps for a 24-word seed. So there you go. So a really good illustration of why tampering with your seed like this is often a really bad idea and you're almost always better off just using a passphrase. Just like most of the features in BTC Recover, uh, this feature to be able to check, you know, swaps of words is available for pretty much all wallets and chains and coin types uh, that are supported by BTC Recover for seed recovery. If you have any questions about this specific type of recovery or BTC Recover in general, just leave a reply in the comments. And if you're totally, totally stuck and want either one-on-one -on -one support or a trusted recovery, you can request one of those through my website. Anyway, best of luck and stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.